On this episode of Internet Business Mastery, we talk about niche, authority, and affiliate sites, and which one is best for online income. And in the quick tip, we share with you how to instantly have a site with the optimized layout just like ours. Welcome to InternetBusinessMastery.com, where you will learn to take control, make more money, and start an internet business today. Here are your hosts, Sterling and Jay. Hey everyone, I'm Sterling. And I'm Jay. And we're on a mission to help you start your own internet business. You can go to freevideogift.com right now to check out our video that teaches you the right way to start your very own internet business. So Jay, what's going on? Well, I was just thinking a little bit uh, this morning about different learning modes that, uh, that we go into and and how learning modes affect our progress in business and, and life. Because I definitely notice, not only in my own life, but obviously in a lot of the students that we have, where they can hit these certain learning modes that turn into a quagmire and kind of just keep me stuck or keep them, keep them stuck. And I was trying to think, well, why, why is it that that happens? And I, I guess it's, it's kind of this interesting yin yang or back and forth. I mean, as with all, with all things, it's a, it's a balance. But uh, I guess to better explain what I mean here is, you know, there's this kind of learning mode that we might go into when we're, you know, feeling like, man, there's some, something's, I need something new. I need something different. There's got to be another way, you know, something's just kind of itching at you. And, you know, I'm sure that's the kind of learning mode that, sent a lot of people who are listening to this right now out looking on iTunes for, you know, stuff about internet business or escaping the nine to five or whatever, and then led them to our show. And then they're like, oh, this is interesting. Let's see what this has to offer. And, and that certainly has its utility. I, I, I find myself, it's often like the beginning of a new year, like in January, maybe coming, you know, it's in winter and, and feeling ready for spring and a new year maybe feeling a, a need for a reinvigoration. And so maybe I throw myself into a mode of checking out a bunch of different podcasts or some new blogs or um, going here and there reading some different books, um, which is nice because it, it fills the hopper with some new ideas. But then the thing I have to remind myself every time is that at some point, um, as nice as that can feel to constantly be pulling in those new ideas and feeling like I'm being, uh, you know, putting in a nice effort towards um, you know, moving forward in my goals. At some point, I have to, you know, stop and go back into what we often have talked about as the just in time learning mode. Yeah. Or, the, you know, that point where it's actually like, okay, I've identified my next motivation. I've identified my next goal, the best method for reaching that goal. And now I need to focus back down and just, you know, don't consume any information other than anything that's related to what I'm actually going to take action on right now. You know, it comes in just in time and I learn it just in time and then I apply it just in time to reach the goals that I want. And I think there's two main reasons why people can get, or, and when I say people, I'm, I'm talking about myself as well, get stuck in kind of this quagmire. It's kind of two different thinking errors that show up. One is that thinking error of, oh, look at all this effort and aren't I doing a great job at moving towards what I really want? And that's kind of, you know, this confusion between what effort and results. And it can feel really good to like, ooh, I found a new, exciting, bright, shiny blog post about something that, uh, you know, related to internet business. And it feels very good to read that. And, oh, I get down to the end and I'm invigorated and I feel like, oh, that's, uh, you know, that's my effort for the day towards what I want. But if it's about something that I'm not even ready to or haven't decided is the most relevant thing to take action on, really, you know, by the time I need that information, if ever... I'm going to have forgotten it anyway. So, you know, has that really served me well? Well, probably not. So it's kind of this, um, you know, getting stuck in my efforts, feeling good about, it's kind of a, a little bit of a, a mistruth that we tell ourselves in consuming that kind of information. The second thinking error is like, okay, maybe we have settled on a goal and we have settled on, okay, this is the direction we need to go. And so we are a bit more focused, but then we're just completely overwhelming ourselves thinking, well, now I need to go and consume everything I can find about this one topic. And that's not just in time or conducive to results either, because we just end up overwhelmed and then don't take action because we're like, oh, there's just too much. So what's the use? Yeah. I mean, that's definitely like, you're like, I want to start an internet business. And then on your journey to find all this information, you're learning everything you can about Google Plus and how you can get traffic to a site you don't even have yet on a right. niche that you haven't even picked. You don't have a business plan. Like it's, and, and I did that for, for a long time, sadly, when I first started. So yeah, right. I know. And for me, it's very similar right now. I, I had been in a just action stage 
and now I'm back into a just-in-time learning, but the thing I have to always remember and the rule I set for myself, even yesterday, I was going through some information I had pulled about some traffic stuff I'm learning. And as I'm sitting there highlighting this thing and, and making notes, I had to remember that the whole key to the just-in-time learning is you have to add the action to it. So I'm like, okay, I've got to find something in what I'm reading that I can take action on today. And then right. anything I've highlighted and done, it needs to be properly put into my, you know, where I put my information. And I need to have an action plan that the rest of the week will be working on this, you know, what right. I just learned. I. If I'm going to just put it away and maybe three months later try and find that paper, it's not just in time learning. So yeah. it, there has to be the quick action as if you're just beginning, it's like, well, what's the first step? Well, if you choose that you're going to go with somebody that's teaching it so you don't have to go through all the same mistakes they did, you can jump ahead of that, then you get the program and then you do the first thing that the program says. I mean, that's, that would be just in time learning, you know, at a beginning stage, but no matter what it's get just what you need. And then you have to take action on it at, at the best, I think the same day. And there's times when I'm reading through something that the moment I get to an action, I actually don't read the rest. I stop right there. And I say to myself, I'm not going to read further until this action is taken. That to me is the most effective way is to read until I can take an action, take that action and then read further. Uh, but there's times when I'll read five pages, make a bunch of notes, and then I go take action right after. Yeah. So, I mean, I guess to just kind of sum up and uh, it's almost as if we're giving people a double uh, feature segment here because this <laughs> yep. is such important stuff, but it really has been on my mind. And it's like, you know, you got to recognize that there's these different phases. It, it's perfectly okay and great to have that go out, get excited, get reinvigorated, acquire knowledge mode, but it then has to be limited in window, followed up immediately by, okay, now focused just in time learning, which then has to be immediately and followed up by action. And that's how we end up getting results and uh, be careful not to get stuck in the quagmire of any of those uh any of those individual phases, you got to move through them in the appropriate times. So there you go. Just in time learning. And now the feature segment. All right. On this episode, we want to clear up a source of confusion that we see when people are considering internet business, getting into internet business, you know, wondering which route should I go? And, you know, often we'll hear a question like, well, what's the best way? I, you know, I hear about niche sites. I hear about authority sites. I hear about affiliate sites. Which one really is the best for online income? So let's take a look at these three kinds of sites that get talked about a lot. And we'll answer that question, which is the best. In fact, we're going to go ahead and answer that question right now. The quick and simple answer is none of them <laughs> is the best. Meaning don't do a business? <laughs> or meaning we can't possibly tell you which business would be best for you because that's up to you and your goals. Well, I think it's, yeah, it's definitely up to, it, it's dependent on goals. And also I think part of the confusion is people, they hear these words thrown out there and they feel like, oh, these are three different distinct types of businesses or types of sites. I can choose either a niche site or an authority site or an affiliate site. And actually they're not, you know, it's, it's not an either or distinction. But before we get into that, maybe we can just kind of define those three words. So we're all working with uh, you know, the same kinds of terms and what at least we mean when we're, we uh, speak to these. You know, a niche site is focused on a very specific topic, but not only just a specific topic, also a specific audience. That's an important distinction that we teach in the academy that we actually don't see anybody else teaching when it comes to choosing a niche topic. People fail to talk about, well, who is the audience? You know, it's one thing to say, oh, okay, my site is going to be about weight loss with kettlebells. Okay, well, that's a great niche. It's also very you know popular these days, but it's going to be way more effective if you consider the audience too of, oh, I'm going to talk about how women can use kettlebells to lose the last 10 pounds after uh, a pregnancy or something like that has, or illness or something has caused them to put on some extra weight. You know, that's different than saying, okay, or helping men lose 50 pounds, two different audiences. So when we say niche site, we mean focusing on a specific topic and a specific audience. Authority site is where you create a site where you are seen as uh, an expert or as the go-to person to your audience. They come to know and like and trust you to a point where they're like, well, whenever I have questions about X, whenever I have questions about you know my daily kettlebell routines that are going to help me you know, trim that last bit of fat off of my belly or underneath the arms or whatever the case may be, 
this is the go-to person that I'm, that I'm going to get my information from. So that's what an authority site is all about. An affiliate site is referring to a site you create that sells other people's products, uh, not products that you create yourself, but going out and, you know, an easy example would be like on Amazon, you could create a site uh, geared around a certain topic that, that sells any of the, and refers people to any of the products on, on Amazon. And if the, the people that click through your links to Amazon end up buying stuff, you get a percentage of commission based off of the purchases that they make. Now, in hearing these definitions, you might already realize it's like, okay, I can start seeing why this is not a mutually exclusive either or type question that really there's, I guess you could think of it more as a, uh, you know, a Venn diagram, which is one of those diagrams with the circles and, you know, where do these circles cross over? And uh, really your business could be such that it crosses over completely in all three of these areas or has different varying amounts of these three different areas. So it's really more of kind of a spectrum thing. Where do you fall on a spectrum? And in the end, as Sterling already uh, indicated, this is going to be dependent on what your business goals are. But you know, regardless of where you fall on this spectrum, the truth is that the process, the principles, the fundamentals of what works in business, the fundamentals of getting people engaged and getting their attention and selling to them online are always still the same. You know, it's funny, we'll get asked questions like in our coaching groups, uh, okay, you know, I'm in the academy, it's great, but how does this apply to a service business? Well, actually, it applies exactly the same. It's just that instead of selling a digital information product, you're selling a service. Okay, great, Sterling and Jay, I've, I'm in the academy, it's great, but um, I don't really want to be an expert, so how would that change? Well, actually, it's exactly the same. You just don't necessarily use your name up front as the person that's putting forth this information or this site. Oh, great, Sterling and Jay, well, I want to sell uh, yoga mats online. How can I use the academy to sell that? Well, actually, it's still exactly the same because we've based the whole thing on just the proven fundamentals and formula that work no matter what kind of niche or authority or affiliate site that you're wanting uh, to create. In the end, it's about finding a hungry audience and giving them what they want. All the gurus teach the same stuff at the fundamental. Create great content, attract an audience, and then sell them products based on what they want. Any good marketer is going to tell you that. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. You, you feeling good about that? <laughs> so really, I mean, so to go back to Sterling's point of it depends on what your goals are, it is a matter of a few simple questions. Well, do you want to be visible on the site? You know, do you want to be visible as, yeah, I am that expert, that go-to person. People are seeing me personally as a brand, like with Internet Business Mastery, it's Sterling and Jay. And that's just a lifestyle decision. Are you the kind of person that wants to have those upfront opportunities be seen and visible and get that kind of appreciation and recognition and the opportunities that come with that? Or are you more of a private person? I want to put great information out there, deliver value to people, but nobody needs, needs to know it's me. You know, it can just be my site as a brand, or it can even be a, a pen name that you make up. And that pen name might actually be multiple different people. You know, to use an example, some people... Uh, have this theory that Shakespeare was actually multiple different people writing his stuff. Now, whether or not that's true, I think it illustrates the point of, you know, it could be Shakespeare was just a pen name for multiple different people. That kind of thing happens all the time, even in present day online. So are you visible or are you behind some kind of brand or any combination in between? It's a lifestyle decision. Another question would be, well, do you create the content yourself? Are you the one that's you know writing the blog posts or recording some audios? Or do you go and hire other people to create that content for you? Or maybe do you partner up with somebody who's already got great content and you're just the person behind the scenes that's putting things on the side and has the vision and the marketing and the strategy and knows how to you know bring these things to an audience, uh, whereas a lot of people who have expertise have no idea how to market that expertise. They're just brilliant in that certain area that they, uh, that they practice in, that they've mastered. Another question would be, well, do you want to sell your own products, you know, eventually create your own ebooks or courses or videos uh, or yoga mats? Or do you just want to go to Amazon and refer people to products on Amazon or go to uh, somebody else's ebook on a site like ClickBank and refer people to that fat loss or kettlebell uh, uh, product that's already been made because you believe it's a great product and you just kind of want to attract the audience and pre-sell them and send them that way? So... Those are three, three questions, key questions to consider. So what is it that we teach to do and why is it that we teach that in the academy? Well, as I've already said, it's about the fundamentals that we teach of just getting that hungry audience, finding out what they want and delivering value. But the reason that we do put a little bit more of an emphasis on what you call an authority or an expert site 
is that it, in the end, it brings to you the biggest opportunities, the, the biggest opportunities for fulfillment, the biggest opportunities for recognition, the biggest opportunities to have a big impact and influence in life. You know, it's, it's very exciting to have a business like that versus just having, you know, this behind the scenes site that you're just publishing content, whether yours or other people's too. Yeah. And actually you get, uh, all the benefit of all three business types combined. You get to pick a niche that you love. You become the face and expert. And once you get that audience, you get to sell affiliate products. So it's like it merges everything. Right. Really, you should be doing both. And, and the reason, yeah, in the academy, like right up front, we get people as quickly as possible selling affiliate products. Well, why is that? Well, it's because they don't have to go create their own product. They can get to money way faster, which is what everybody wants to do. And then that boosts confidence and gives them money coming in to then funnel into, okay, now I've got some time and resources to put into creating my own product. That's a great point. You get the advantages of all three wherever you might find uh, yourself kind of in that... Uh, you know, fall, falling in your lifestyle design choices that you make. Another one is that when you are seen as an authority or an expert, you get to command the highest prices because people, they no longer are making a decision based on price. They're making a decision based on, no, you know what? I want to do business with you. I've come to know and like and trust you. I'm not price shopping here anymore. I want to learn internet business from you. I want to learn yoga techniques from you. I want to learn how to create uh, exquisite macrame from you because you're the person. You are my go-to person. And in that case, you're no longer a commodity. You know, a commodity situation is like, I need a dentist. I throw open the yellow pages and now all of a sudden I'm overwhelmed with 30 different ads that all look exactly the same have a nice little photo of the dentist and their family, a list of their address, and oh, hey, we can make your smile gleam. It's like, okay, great, but how do you pick one from the other? I guess I'll go with the cheapest. I guess I'll go with the closest. You know, it's readily shopped around like that. But in this kind of approach, now you, again, are in the minds of your audience, you become the option, the only option. Yeah, in the end, no one can actually be you other than you. They can certainly try and have, but no one's going to bring the same voice to the content and the products as you. Yeah, I mean, that's a perfect message. We love saying that when, you know, whenever we got like a coaching student who's a bit worried about competition. In fact, we got this just this week. Someone came to us and said, oh no, there's already somebody really well established in my niche. What should I do? And we said, great. That means that there's a viable market in your niche. Just go for it. Because in the end, people aren't going to simply make a decision based on you know which side has been around the longest. In the end, they're really going to make a decision based on who do they know and like the trust and, and trust the most. So by just going out there and being 100% you, some people are going to resonate more with you than the other guy. And, that's, and there's plenty of people, billions of people in this world, and you only need a small, small, small fraction of them in order to make a healthy uh, online living. And then the final advantage to kind of, to going with this authority expert approach is that you can have the biggest impact since people are more likely to find you online. You're more visible. They're more likely to take what you say into account because we're just kind of made that way as human beings to look for experts, to give us information, to, to help us filter through all the different possibilities in life. We don't have enough time and resources to figure everything out ourselves. And so one of the ways we deal with that, the one of the ways we survive and actually get our needs met is to find experts that help us know what is the best choice. We've already done that work for us. And that's you know, the, kind of this division of, of labor and information that, uh, that our whole society is based on these days. So by becoming one of those go-to people, you can have a bigger impact. And I think that's the goal of a lot of people who are listening to this. They want to not only make money, they want to make a change in the world as well. And that's a great thing to be thinking about. Now, that said, this is not the only way to make money online. And in fact, what we teach, again, covers the entire spectrum. If you wanted to be a behind-the-scenes person, not make your own products, and just go ahead and make and, and sell affiliate products. Now, the reason we do teach to make your own products, because we know a lot of people do want to do that, and in the end, your income potential is much higher when you do make your own products. And when you only sell affiliate products, your business is a little more at the whim of you know other people, you know, as quite as in control of your income stream. I mean, Sterling, you've had trouble in the past with businesses where all of a sudden the source of a product started drying up and, and took a ding on your income, right? Yeah. I mean, that, that certainly is the downside of physical products, unless I guess you're the one who created it and made it and make it wherever you make it. So you're in control of that, which is almost never the case in terms of, you know, the physical products or, you know, selling iPods or whatever. So that's what we teach how to find uh, the perfect niche and audience. 
you know, so the niche side of this triad we're talking about here. We teach how to make your own products. I mean, we teach you how to go and sell affiliate products first for the fast money, but then eventually how to make your own so that you can have the greatest income potential. And we teach you, if you want, how to be that authority person so that you can maximize your opportunities, maximize your impact, and be that go-to person within your market. But the truth is, no matter where you fall in that spectrum, you can adapt the fundamentals of marketing and the th kinds of things that we teach in our Internet Business Mastery Academy to fit the needs that you have, the lifestyle choices that you have. And, you know, I know that whole phrase expert or authority can be very intimidating to people. And we're very sensitive to that because we know that we're very programmed to think like, well, expert, why should I be an expert? I've never gotten a graduate degree in X or I've never been licensed by the body of whatever, you know, the official international associate. You know, our, our society has programmed us to like have to expect those kinds of, uh, I guess, credentials or for a higher authority to be able to deem us worthy. But that's just not true when it comes to becoming an expert in authority. And that's why we're going to spend the next two episodes talking more about this very important topic. We have a great interview with an expert on experts, somebody who's written a popular <laughs> book about you know this whole expert phenomenon, how to be an expert, why it's important to be an expert, and why it's not as hard as you think it is. But we'd also propose, if it takes the pressure off, of uh, you know to not think of it as, oh, I've got to be an authority, oh, I've got to be an expert. Because that can make you feel like, oh my gosh, I've got to be the absolute best, smartest person, which is just not true to make money online, believe us. It's not true. You just need to be a person of value. So maybe that's a good phrase we can use for now on uh, when we, it's to qualify that. If, I mean, the word expert we use because that has immediate meaning to people, but uh, just thinking about, hey, I want to be a person of value, somebody who delivers value online. And the higher the value that I deliver, the more money I'll make, and the more money or the more people I'll help. And I think that's the best way to run a business. And also it just so happens, happens to be the best way to make money with uh, as an entrepreneur as well. So that is the answer to the question of which is best. Well, what's best is the one that fits your lifestyle design, but really what's best is to be a person of value and just find that right combination of niche authority and affiliate sites that works for you. As usual, we want to share with you some inspiring breakthroughs from some of our students. We've got two excellent ones to share today. This first one comes from Andrew Miller. He's a member of the Academy and posted this in the forums. And uh, here is what he has to say. I've been consistently updating my blog at andhedrew.com, which I think is a playoff of his name, Andrew since last November, but it's only been in the last week that I've been able to afford the Internet Business Mastery Academy. I've been tearing through the amazing lessons by Sterling and Jay, and today, three days after I joined the Academy, I have just sold my first info product. Yeah. All right. Nice. It's such a rush. I've been literally dancing around the house. I now fully realize the feeling that Sterling and Jay talk about, that once you've sold one, you know deep down in your emotions that you can sell another and another until you're making your income from the value you give to people. Thank you again for everything, Sterling and Jay. And again, that's Andrew Miller at andhedrew.com, A-N-D-H-E-D-R-E-W.com. And it looks like his niche is related to a uh, self-improvement niche. And the one other thing I want to add to that is, Andrew, please send us a video of you dancing around the house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that first, that first sale is always the one that uh, makes it insane. Good luck sleeping tonight. So, exactly. <laughs> All right, we have one more from a coaching student, and her name's Sunday, and here's what she says. Jay and Sterling. Jay and Sterling, I wanted to share with you a significant milestone in my journey of creating stationary design courses online. Last Thursday, I had my first digital sale, and the purchase was made while I was asleep. It's difficult to explain the joy I felt when I saw that amazing email from eJunkie, which I'm assuming is the one that said, you got a sale. Right. And uh, then she says, the 1995 I earned from the sale is the best money I've ever made. Big capital letters on that one. Best yeah, money there you I've go. ever made. <laughs> <laughs> Though I've made some money uh, consulting, nothing feels quite as good as this. I wanted to share this moment with you because you guys have been so instrumental in helping me move closer to my goals. Thank you for your continued inspiration and guidance. Sincerely, Sunday. And she's at invitationdesignworkshop.com. Well, congratulations, Sunday. Again, just like uh, Andrew, that first sale is, is, is the thing that, uh, again, makes it hard to sleep. 
makes you go, okay, how do I get more of those? And a lot more. Let's do it. But it gives you that understanding that you actually can. I love that she had the quintessential make money in her sleep uh, experience. Yeah, I, I guess the other quintessential experience is to make money in your boxers sitting in front of your computer. Those are the two that are always get said, right? You can make money in your sleep. You can make money <laughs> sitting in front of your computer in your boxers. Yeah. So uh, that's awesome. You've already checked the first one off of your, your list there Sunday. But yeah, thanks for sending that in. It's thrilling. Well, and that's funny. That makes me think, okay, where's the best or coolest place I've made money? And where's that? This way. Yeah. Hmm, I'm trying to think. I really loved... While I was standing in line for the Pirates of the Caribbean in Disneyland, I was surfing on my iPhone with my daughters. We were chatting, and I was looking something up, and then all of a sudden I saw that an email came in, and it was a sale, so I could tell the girls, oh, hey, I just made money while we were standing in line in Disneyland. I thought that was pretty cool, and then they were all excited to ask me you know, stuff about the business, so that was kind of cool. How about you? I think it's probably a similar experience where I... Well, I, you know, okay, I'll go a different direction because I know that that's one that comes to mind too is being on vacation and actually coming back from vacation with more money than when you left is a, is, is a great feeling. I'll, I'll actually go ahead and say it was pretty darn cool to have, you know, so much money come in. In fact, you know, just nice steady income in February when, you know, I just had our first child, Calliope, and was able to spend a lot of time with her. And yet, you know, the money just keeps coming in. So it's like, you know, I'm changing diapers, money's showing up in the, yeah. in the inbox. You know, I'm helping my wife recover from delivery, money's coming into the inbox. I'm, you know, bonding with my first child, money's still coming into the inbox. And that's a, a pretty amazing experience. Yeah, very, very cool. And remember, there's a live question and answer call each month for coaching members where you can ask us anything about starting and running your internet business. Not a coaching member yet? No problem. Just visit internetbusinessmastery.com forward slash coaching to get the latest information about our coaching program. It's time for the Internet Business Quick Tip. You know, it's fun uh, to see as people put together their websites, our students, how many sites end up using the exact same theme that we use on our site, which I can't blame them. I mean, why not work use something that's already uh, working? And of course, given that we give that very specific 17-point checklist in the Academy of here's what should be on your site, it makes a lot of sense. I mean, you could definitely tell an Internet Business Mastery member, but uh, I think it's so, so smart when people are like, uh, what, what theme do you use? And they'll just go use that one. And it actually is one that anybody could go buy. I mean, we have made you know a few little custom alterations to the navigation and some stuff like that. But if anybody's wondering how they can instantly have uh, a site that's optimized and looks like ours, all you need to do is go and download and use the Fresh News theme, which is made by a premium theme creator, Woo Themes. And you can access that theme by going to internetbusinessmastery.com slash Woo Themes, W-O-O Themes, and that'll uh, take you to their site and then just uh, go through and find yourself the fresh news theme. Now, there is a charge in order to access and be able to use their premium themes, but these are quality themes that we've both used on many different sites, and they're just easy to use, very, very attractive, and come with a lot of other great additional features that you know make, make for a, an excellent marketing experience. So there you go, fresh news theme. If you'd like to get dozens of resources such as this one, you can find them in the Internet Business Mastery Academy, along with video tutorials showing you exactly how we use many of them. So to get your risk-free trial membership to the Academy, go to internetbusinessmasteryacademy.com. You've been listening to the iconoclasts of the 9 to 5, Sterling and Jay. Sterling and Jay invite you to discover one of their most popular video programs ever, the Online Business Freedom Formula. Visit freevideogift.com right now to get instant access to this life-changing video series. Pull directly from the acclaimed Internet Business Mastery Academy membership community. Go now to freevideogift.com. Take control. Make more money. Start an Internet business today.